Hi, this is Jim. This video is about sail shape and in particular it tries to address the question of why is it that different kinds of sailboats have such different sail shapes? So you see some exotic racing boats and they have these very, very flat sails sheeted very close to the center line of the boat and you look at more cruising oriented boats and they'll have much more curvature of their sails and they'll be sheeted farther out. And so why is that? And so I'll be using some computer models to explore that and give you some idea of the trade-offs that are involved that, that lead to these differences in sail shape. I um, want to make it clear that you know, sail designers do not need to run computer software to come up with great sail designs. In fact, they were creating excellent sails long before the software was available. And in particular, the racing circuit is this, this strong evolutionary pressure that keeps forcing improvement um, as, as time goes on. It's pretty hard to, to hide a good set of sails when you're racing because they, your competitors can see your performance. They can also see the shape of your sails, how you're sheeting, and so on. And so this, this kind of evolution has been going on for as long as people have been sailing. Anyway, I will be using computer models in this case because they allow us to explore the why behind some of these things that obviously work. So, if thinking about just the jib and mainsail, I would argue that those sails are designed initially around sailing upwind, close hauled. And that's because if you design sails for close hauled, those same sails will do very well in other points of sail. On the other hand, if you were to design your jib and mainsail for sailing downwind, you'd end up with these big baggy sails, sort of like triangular spinnakers. And they'd be fine sailing downwind, but they'd be atrocious for sailing upwind. So you really, from a sail design point of view, you start with the upwind case, and then the other cases sort of fall into place. Um, and the minute you talk about sailing upwind, you're talking about velocity made good. Uh, it's not just the boat speed that counts, but how close to the wind you can get. And it, as we'll see, velocity made good really drives these differences in the optimum sail shape for different kinds of boats. So before spending more time on VMG, let's just talk about sails in general. And so imagine you were just trying to come up with a sail shape that generated the, the maximum pressure differential between the two sides of the sail. And you'd probably, you know, you could fool around in the wind tunnel or with computer software, but you'd end up with something sort of like this shape with a pretty fat section, maybe, you know, 14, 15% camber, um, draft somewhere around 45%. And, and you'd want the air coming at the sail at a real healthy angle of attack. And under those conditions, this shape will generate an amazing pressure differential, high pressure on this side, low pressure on that side. And also the curvature of the sail means the pressure differential, which is largely up here near the front, is most oriented towards the bow. So that helps drive the boat forward. And so, you know, naively you say, well, why doesn't every sail end up shaped like this? And in fact, this is a pretty good shape for sailing, I'd say, a close reach and generates a lot of pressure differential and you get a lot of boat speed on a close reach. But imagine as we start trying to sail truly upwind, close hauled, what's going to be happening is the angle of the wind, the angle of attack, is going to get narrower and narrower. And eventually we get to the point where the air starts impinging on this point in the sail. And when the pressure on this part of the sail equals or exceeds the part on the other side, the sail collapses and you end up in irons. Um, which is a point of sale, but probably not one we really want to spend much time in. So, you know, in the short term, obviously you can fall off, and that gives you a greater angle of attack, and the sail reinflates. But from a design point of view, the other option is to flatten the sail out. And now we can sail, and also sheet it in, but now we can sail closer to the wind. And so this sail will now resist collapsing at a, to a much tighter angle than the fat sail. Of course, eventually it's going to collapse, but you know this allows us to sail closer to weather. The problem is, as we flatten the sail, we've also reduced its ability 
to generate a pressure differential. And this slider sail will still generate a nice pressure differential, but not as much as the cambered sail. And so therein lies the trade-off that we're going to have to explore. And it's really a trade-off that's explored in terms of VMG. So to um, you know, f follow this line of reasoning, I'm going to create two fictitious sailboats. These sailboats don't exist, but they have the virtue of being identical in their sail plan. So both sailboats have exactly the same sail area distributed exactly the same way between the jib and mainsail. Um, but one boat's going to be a racer and the other boat's going to be a cruiser. So here are our two boats. The racer on the left doesn't have any interior, it doesn't carry any water or food, and certainly doesn't have much fuel on board. And you'll notice that it has a very tall and thin keel shape. And that makes her a very efficient airfoil. So the racer is going to be quite good at going upwind in terms of the performance of the hull and keel. On the other hand, that kind of keel shape doesn't give much directional stability, but that's okay because we have somebody good at the helm. The cruiser, on the other hand, weighs quite a bit more because it's carrying the food and fuel and all the spare parts needed for long-distance cruising. And you notice the keel has quite a bit more surface area but it's distributed more fore and aft. So that's not quite as efficient an airfoil, but it gives the boat a lot of directional stability. So the cruising boat will be very happy on autopilot or with self-steering. And also, if things get really bad, the racer will probably just stay home. And the cruiser doesn't have that option. And this is the kind of hull shape that you can leave unattended in a hove to position for long periods of time. So these are both very legitimate 10 meter boats. They just have different design objectives. So the approach to figuring out how to set the sails would be to do a number of computer runs, each one having a different sail shape, apparent wind angle, and sail camber. That's the basically fullness of the sail. And all these runs will be done at 15 knots of apparent wind. And we'll just compare them on the basis of velocity made good. So these two plots show on the left the racer, the velocity made good in knots versus apparent wind angle. And each one of the colored lines there is a different sail configuration. And we're just looking for the winner, which is then marked with a little blue arrow. And the exact same thing's done with the cruiser. We just run all these cases, calculate the velocity made good, and see where we end up. And as you can see, the racer ends up at about a 30 degree apparent wind angle, while the cruiser ends up at a 35 degree wind angle. We'll see what the sail shape looks like on the next slide. Well, here are two boats viewed from essentially upwind. The colorization is based on pressure, where red is high pressure and blue is low pressure. Of course, we're looking at the high pressure side of the sails. At first glance, these two pictures look pretty similar, but if you look carefully, you can see that the racer sails are sheeted closer in than the cruiser, and also the racer sails are flatter. Um, well, the cruiser, you can actually see a little bit of the low-pressure blue side of the jib peeking through there because the jib has quite a bit more curvature. So we can't see the apparent wind angle, so to add that, let's add streamlines to these images. The white lines here are streamlines, which are the path that imaginary little bits of fluff would take as they flowed with the air through the model. And you can see there's a, about a five degree difference in the angle that the air is approaching the sailboats, while the racer is at 30 degrees apparent wind, the cruiser is at 35 degrees. The general path of the air is quite similar, but if you were to look closely, you'd see that the more curved sails for the cruiser are generating bigger velocity differences between the two sides of the sails, and that'll lead to bigger pressure differences. To look in more detail at the pressure distributions, I'm going to take a horizontal slice through the two sails about a third of the way up. So now we're looking down at a slice through the sails. The mast is roughly in the middle of the pictures 
and the jib is to the right and the mainsail to the left. And you can see right away that the sail shape for the racer is quite a bit flatter than that for the cruiser. And if you look really closely, you'll see that the jib and mainsail are sheeted closer to the center line of the boat. And so this is what's allowing the racer to sail at 30 degrees of parent wind while the cruiser is sailing at 35 degrees. On the other hand, the colorization of the field there is based on pressure. So the redder colors are high pressure and the bluer colors are low pressure. And you can see that the cruiser is generating quite a bit more pressure differential, particularly across the jib. So the cruiser is a heavier boat and needs that extra pressure differential to generate the boat speed. And so it's logical that the cruiser is going to want to operate in a way that generates more forward force. While the racer is so easily driven, its optimum is with flatter sails uh, sailed closer to the wind. So here we're looking at a similar comparison between the two boats, except now we have 25 knots of apparent wind instead of 15. So this puts the two boats in quite a different situation. The racer is so light and easily driven that it's starting to run up against the hull speed, which limits how much faster the boat can really go. And so if you can't go faster, the way to get your VMG higher is to sail closer to the wind and minimize leeway. And that's just what's happened. The apparent wind angle optimum has now shifted down to about 28 degrees for the racer. But over in the cruiser, it's in quite a different situation. 25 knots of wind is just a comfortable wind speed for the cruiser. It's not anywhere near hull speed. And so the optimum has remained about 35 degrees of apparent wind. These images give you an idea of the sail shape for these 25 knot apparent wind cases. The racer sails have become even flatter and sheeted even more closely to the center line of the boat. And interestingly enough, the cruiser has a wider sheeting angle and more curved sails, but the optimum has also shifted towards flatter sails sheeted more tightly to the center line of the boat for the cruiser as well. Here we're looking at the streamlines with 25 knots of apparent wind and the racer is really sailing quite close to weather. You can see that by the very small angle the wind has relative to the center line of the boat. The cruiser is still at 35 degrees and that allows the cruiser sails to generate quite a bit more pressure differential, which we'll see on the next slide. So here we're looking at a slice through the sails about a third of the way up, and the colorization is based on relative pressure. And you see immediately just how flat the racer's sails have become in order to sail efficiently at 28 degrees of apparent wind speed. Remember, the racer is going almost hull speed in this case. So with that high a wind speed, it doesn't take a large relative pressure differential to generate plenty of force to repel the racer. The cruiser also has a lot more energy to work with at 25 knots, but the optimum is somewhat more curved sails sheeted a bit farther out. You can see again we have a nice pressure differential generated by those sails. Well, in summary, I hope I've given you some sort of a logical framework for thinking about sail shape. And the next time you go into your sail maker to buy a new set of sails, hopefully this will help. It's important to keep in mind that you have to tell the sail maker what wind speed you're targeting. And in general, the higher the wind speed you're targeting, the flatter the sails you're going to end up with. Also, it, it's worth noting that this is just one of a myriad of things that sail makers have to keep in mind. Think about all the material selection, reinforcements, laying out the panels, adding reef points. It's really a very complicated business that they do, and they do it so well. Well, that concludes this video on sail shape. I hope you've enjoyed it, and please feel free to leave comments and feedback, and also I'd be interested in other subjects you'd be interested in covering. Enjoy your sailing.